Welcome to the Northern Kentucky Spotlight Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Brookbank. Today on the podcast, we are joined by Jimmy Beatrice, the 2023-2024 NKYP chair, who highlights recent changes to the program and the upcoming Bourbon and Boards event happening on November 7th. On NKY at Work, we are joined by Sarah Kreider, an apprenticeship consultant for the Kentucky Education and Labor Cabinet, who highlights how local businesses can benefit from apprenticeships. Thank you to our podcast sponsors, our title sponsor, CBG, C Crew Consulting, our digital sponsor, and our episode sponsor, Haran. Like I said, Jimmy and I will be talking about Bourbon and Boards happening on Tuesday, November 7th. It's an opportunity for young professionals to meet with local nonprofit organizations that are seeking young professionals to join their boards. You can register for that event now at nkychamber.com slash events. And if you're not convinced now, stay tuned for me and Jimmy to tell you a little bit more about this exciting event. Now, let's go meet our members of the week, hear from our sponsors, and I'll be back with this week's guests. Why would you travel to England? For football. To go or not to go? That is an easy question. To visit the land of Shakespeare. To take in all the sights. Authentic fish and chips. To experience arts and culture. Two words, British Open. To visit my family. Same reason I go anywhere. For a pint of beer. To start my trip through Europe. Whatever your reason, there's no better time than now. It requires constant effort and attention. Uploading new photos, responding to Google reviews, writing weekly posts, and checking suggested updates. Google listing optimization takes experience and time. And there are no shortcuts. C-Crew gives your Google My Business account the steady, consistent attention it needs to be effective. Optimizing, updating, and expanding critical content every single week. From local retail stores to large regional networks, C-Crew generates content, establishes benchmarks, and creates dramatic measurable increases in engagement. So what can C-Crew do for your business? More calls, more clicks, more clients. Congratulations to our members of the week. You can learn more about these businesses by following the Northern Kentucky Chamber on social media, where we will highlight one of these businesses each day. Now, let's meet our members of the week. Natural Shea Care is a Black-owned business that produces naturally, socially, and ethically conscious beauty care products. Rising Star Casino Resort is a full house resort and casino located in Rising Sun, Indiana. And from November 1st through January 2nd, they transform into the Christmas Casino. Newport Aquarium welcomes your family to discover the wonder of an underwater world. Bluegrass Care Navigators provides patient-centered care to the seriously ill and their families with excellence and compassion. The YMCA of Greater Cincinnati builds inclusive and joyful environments where all people can reach goals, make friends, and connect to a cause greater than themselves. Hi, everyone. Today on the podcast, we are joined by Jimmy Beatrice, who is our NKYP chair. You are also a benefits advisor with Business Benefits. Jimmy, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yes. So NKYP, we're talking all things young professionals. And NKYP has been recently reimagined. So tell us what's new with NKYP right now. So we're just really excited going into the next year and um, got a few new things kind of uh, that we're planning on implementing. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens. It's really exciting stuff. Um, one of them is a service project. Uh, we're bringing back the event pass. So we've got a lot of good stuff coming uh, down the pipeline. Yeah. One of the things about NKYP that you guys are focusing on right now is the why in NKYP. So tell us what that is. So I don't know if any of the listeners uh, attended our, um, we had a little kind of kickstart event uh, uh, last week, the week before, um, and Gene spoke, who um, uh, works with the chamber, he spoke at our event and really talked about the why um, or what it's all about. And really a lot of it is about the region um, and kind of developing leaders, um, kind of the next generation of leaders, which ironically is one of our main events, right. Next Generation Leadership Awards, but also trying to retain people in the region. So those are really the big factors, trying to create an attractive environment where people want to stay here, they want to work here, um, and really try and attract those young professionals in, their, in the region so that when they do 
graduate college. They're not going somewhere else. Um, they want to stay here. They want to live here um, and just try and make it as good of an environment as possible. Yeah, and overarching, like NKYP in general, so for our viewers and listeners who might not know what NKYP is, tell us about the department in general. Yeah, so NKYP is the young professional kind of networking arm of the North Kentucky Chamber. So um, there we get involved in all kinds of different stuff, like we have events, um, we have committees, uh, just like a lot of the other things associated with the North Kentucky Chamber. Um, so it kind of helps develop a lot of those um, growth and leadership type skills as well. Yeah, very cool. Like you said, Next Generation Leader Awards is one where we honor all of these up and comers mm -hmm. in our uh, area. I know Encounter NKY is kind of leadership mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. NKYP connected. Uh, as chair, what are your goals going into this year? Yeah, sure. So um, as far as goals go, I really want to focus on collaboration. Um, we started kind of doing that a bit last year. Uh, there's a few organizations that we did some kind of joint events with, so we definitely want to keep that up. Um, but I really wanted to focus on making sure we're kind of joining with like the encounter class because there's a lot of overlap there. A lot of YPs are in uh, the encounter program, so we want to make sure they're engaged. They're kind of they can come to our events, they can participate in those kinds of things. So. Um, that's a huge thing that I want to do with the collaboration. And then as well as keeping up with what we did last year, like we did a joint event with St. Elizabeth. Uh, we did a joint event with uh, the Emerging Leaders, which is a newer um, kind of networking focused young professionals group. So we really just want to make sure we continue those collaborative efforts. Yeah, that is one of the best parts about the chamber is the collaboration that happens mm -hmm. all the time. So it's great to know that NKYP is trying to foster that collaboration. And you mentioned uh, earlier, there are a lot of opportunities with NKYP to get involved from leadership opportunities to different committees that people mm -hmm. can join. Uh, what are those opportunities? Sure. So really the setup of the committees. There's there's really two main ones that people can join, and anybody can join them. Both of them are, are looking for people, so definitely uh, feel free to, if you're interested, just stop by. Um, it's not like you have to, you're stuck or anything like that. <laughs> you don't have to submit like a 10-page <laughs> resume and a CV. Yeah, yeah. You can just, just roll just up and check get it out. If, you, if it's not your thing, that's fine. Um, but we're both committees are looking to add people. Um, one of them is the Engagement and Outreach Committee. That was the one that I actually started in when I started getting involved with NKYP. So that one is heavily focused on engaging YPs in the community and, and you know chamber members that businesses that might have YPs. So that's going to be become a big aspect of kind of engaging not just new chamber members but existing chamber members to try and get their YPs involved. Um, and then something that we've started doing a little bit more recently is more of a uh, community outreach kind of an aspect where it used to be more focused on trying to engage the YPs in the community. There wasn't really a community service or a community oriented aspect. So that's something we built over the last several years. Mm -hmm. And one, again, also one of the goals that I'm going to look to have this year. So same committee, engagement and outreach, um, except there's going to be a community service component. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the idea of uh, Don Denham, so credit to her, <laughs> for kind of starting the idea. Um, but for what we're going to do is try and develop an annual uh, community service program where uh, we've already developed an RFP for, and it's going to be sent out to uh, all the North Kentucky Chamber nonprofits, uh, chamber members, and they'll basically get back to us on, you know, this is what our needs are, this is what we're looking for, this is what you could help us with, and we're basically telling them, you know, this is, you know, these are what we're looking for, this is the allotted amount of time that we have to, you know, provide whatever services that they're looking for, and, and so to speak. So it's the first time we're doing it, we'll, we'll kind of see where it goes, it's really exciting stuff, um, but like I said, the RFP went out, um, and we're just really excited what we're going to get back and see how we can engage and hopefully form a continual annual project that kind of lasts the entire mm -hmm. uh, fiscal year. Yeah, that is very exciting. Like you said, it is very different from the standard NKYP, which is 
coffees and conversations, yeah. cocktails and conversations, <laughs> breaks and meet and greets. You mentioned it was something that started last year. I know we've done some work with Be Connected, and there's an event coming up with them. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is, in addition to the collaborative effort, the giving back to the community is something that a lot of young people, mm -hmm. a lot of young professionals are trying to struggle or kind of, I feel like as a young professional, it's something that I've always been like, mm -hmm. well, how do I give back in, to my community yeah. in yeah. a way that makes sense with not only like my schedule and my life, mm -hmm. but is meaningful. So I'm very excited to hear sure. more about that project as that comes about. Yeah, um, and it helps with the whole retention aspect. Like yeah. you said, that's what a lot of young professionals are looking for. They're looking for something to be involved with. So mm -hmm. that between this project and Encounter and l &K, like those projects really expose people to the community mm -hmm. and hopefully we can get that to, uh, again, kind of maintain that the white piece in the area. Yeah, another thing that kind of feels very similar is NKYP's Bourbon Affords, which is happening mm -hmm. in November. Yes. That's the same thing where, you know, NKYP brings in a bunch of nonprofits into the area, introduces those leaders to young professionals in the area, and shares with young leaders, like, hey, this is how it how easy it is to be on our board mm -hmm. and how to get back to the community. Mm -hmm. So it's really great that it feels very cohesive that you guys yeah. are doing all of this at once. Yeah, it, it, intentionally. You know, yeah. We <laughs> wanted to release the RFP around the same time as Bourbon and Boards. Um, like you said, we also have um, the Be Concerned event, which is something that we're also kind of trying to make an annual tradition. Um, we, we did that last year, and along with some other just kind of one-off community service uh, oriented projects um, that one was was a big favorite so we're, de we're glad to do that one again mm -hmm. um, but yeah bourbon and boards is huge um, it again try and try and get the YPs to find something that might you know really hit home for them um, something that they want to get involved with and then we're more than happy to have all the nonprofits in the area come out I mean not all of them come out but you know I think they send the pretty good they clip. send the list out to all of them, <laughs> and then whoever wants to come. Maybe some people are more desperate, like they need they have some committee spots they need to fill or board spots they need to fill. Um, we're definitely hoping that those are the ones that come out and join, um, and hopefully there there can open some doors and opportunities for the white piece. Yeah, that is great. And speaking of events. There are a lot of other events happening, but one of the things that you mentioned at the top of the interview is that NKYP is bringing back the event pass. Yes. So for people who missed out on that, what is the event pass and what uh, can young professionals expect from that? Sure. So, yeah, very happy to bring the event pass back. Um, that was something that myself, uh, Mike Ballinger, John Ensweiler, and Hank Heydrich, we've been really been trying to push of getting this back. It was something that they used to have, um, but it's it's... It's something they used to have, but it's also different um, than mm -hmm. what it used to be. It kind of, kind of going back a little bit, it used to be more of like a, NKYP used to be more of like a membership. So mm -hmm. it used to be called the passport, and you had to buy the passport just to kind of gain access to the committees or just really get involved at all. And we didn't want to have it that way. We really just want it to be something that makes it more affordable for YPs, you know, they might be just getting out of college and they don't have, you know, tons of money if they're paying for it themselves. And also a way to make it easier for businesses to pay for um, ways for their YPs to get engaged in the chamber programs. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of helps in both, both of those aspects, but really it gets, uh, gets them access to all of our NKYP events, uh, gets them access to eggs and issues, um, which is another big favorite of a lot of white piece, a lot of networking, you know. Um, and then it pretty much, I believe it gives them access to all the other uh, Northern Kentucky Chamber events with a few exceptions. Um, there's also, if people are interested, there's an annual dinner discount that's also listed on there. So if people are interested in doing and mm -hmm. attending the annual dinner, it, it's an awesome event. So I'm glad to also provide a discount for people interested in that. Yeah, that is a great opportunity, like you said, for people who maybe aren't fully into the chamber but want to get their feet wet, mm -hmm. learn a little bit more mm -hmm. as a young professional about NKYP. But, Jimmy, it's been great to have you on. There are a couple more things I want to touch on before you leave. Yeah. So for businesses who want to get involved with NKYP and have a little bit more exposure and for young professionals who want to learn more, how can people get more information and how can they get involved? Sure, sure. And and just to double back real quick, mm -hmm. um, I, I've only really talked about the engagement and outreach. We also have the event planning committee. Don't have to say a whole lot about that. <laughs> it, it kind of explains itself, but we have the committee that organizes and puts together the events. And then as far as, you know, 
getting involved in everything, um, really the, the first step is just kind of going to one of the committee meetings. Um, that, that's how I started getting involved. That's how most people start getting involved other than kind of just attending events that they're able to go to. And then if they want, if they like what they're doing and they want to be more involved with NKYP, you know, take the next step, you know, put a little bit more participation in, attend the committee meetings, and eventually you might, you know, move up to co-chair. And then as far as, you know, if you become a co-chair, that gives you a spot, at the, a seat at the table for the steering committee, which the steering committee is the third committee, and that kind of oversees everything that goes on in NKYP. Um, but as far as getting involved um, and, you know, joining the committees, they can definitely reach out to me. They can reach out to Kyle, um, who works at the chamber. And really, any of any of the the, board, the steering committee members that are at events, you know, don't hesitate to come talk to us. You know, yeah. that's that's what we're there to do is to help you help everybody out and, and keep them informed. Yeah, that is so great. And Jimmy, thank you so much for your time today. Is there anything else you would like to add about NKYP before I let you go? Um, I think <laughs> well, you know what, that counts. <laughs> Um, uh, I guess our, we, we do have some upcoming events. Um, we did mention bourbon and boards and be concerned. Um, we do have the holiday party coming up in December. Um, Hank Heydrich, who's the vice chair this year, he really uh, helped us elevate our events uh, the last year, uh, which is why we were, we're happy to see him in the vice chair position. Um, but that's one of the, the other things that we've really improved upon is trying to elevate our events to not just make it networking, but have something educational or interactive, um, something more fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, like we have, the, we're, we're going to try and do the an annual ball game. We're going to try and do the annual Emerging Leaders Collaborative event, um, but also uh, the holiday party. I feel like it's a pretty amplified version of what we've done in the past. It's not just a you know, go to Braxton's networking type thing. It's mm -hmm. it's going to be at Turquoise Park, which I've never been there before. Nice. Um, we have like a, one of the horse races, like we're going to be involved with one of the horse races that evening. Um, so it's going to be a, a, a really good event. Yeah, that sounds like so much fun. They're not going to have you riding horses. No. Are you a professional <laughs> jockey and I'm you not. didn't open the interview with that? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> well, Jimmy, thank you so much for coming on and sharing a little bit more about NKYP. For anybody who wants to get involved, information is really easily accessible through the Chamber website. Also, NKYP does have a LinkedIn page and a Facebook page that we share a lot of information out about events. Um, but Jimmy, thanks again for being yeah, on. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, I am subbing in for Nancy Spivey on Northern Kentucky at Work. Today I am joined by Sarah Kreider, another fellow Sarah, and Sarah's with the Kentucky Career Center. You are the Northern Kentucky Apprenticeship Rep. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the podcast. We're happy to have you. Um, so tell us about apprenticeships. We have a long history of apprenticeships in our country. What do present day apprenticeships look like? Yeah, so... Well, in the Office of Apprenticeship, we do like to call the apprenticeship the original four-year degree. But, um, you know, in colonial America and throughout the mid-19th century, apprenticeship was modeled on old-world practices. So a master craftsman agreed to teach a young person a trade, as well as care for the apprentice, as if the apprentice were a member, a family member in exchange. So despite its near disappearance toward the mid-20th century by the late 1960s, craft apprenticeships saw a revival, and we have seen a steady climb in apprenticeships throughout today. Um, so just in the past decade, apprenticeship across the country has increased 64%. So that's almost 400,000 people have completed an apprenticeship just in the past five years. Um, some other great news, female participation um, in apprenticeship is increasing over time. So the share of women apprentices uh, was lower than men's share for the age group 16 to 34, but was higher than men's share for the age group older than 35, which I thought was super interesting. But we are currently working on more high school focused apprenticeships. However, we do have some extremely lucrative apprenticeships that where local employers are seeing apprentices increasing in age. Um, we only have data through 2021. However, Zapia.com reports that the average apprentice age is 41 years old. Um, so in many ways, the apprenticeship model is still the same. Uh, but most would argue, including myself, they are more lucrative opportunities. You get to earn while you learn. And in most cases, if higher education is a requirement, the employer assists with tuition reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So according to the Department of Labor, the average apprentice graduates with a starting salary of $80,000 right now. Yeah, that's incredible. That's yeah. way more than what you're going to get. Well, not always, but a standard four-year degree. It's compared that's to, yeah. 
really something for our students who are looking to get out into the workforce. Yeah, I agree, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you guys uh, want to touch on there are a lot of exciting opportunities and occupations that are getting added to mm -hmm. this pool of apprenticeships in the state. What are some of those opportunities? So we have been working hard over in Northern Kentucky Apprenticeship Office, but um, so we just started a partnership with Northern Kentucky University. Mm -hmm. That's what we're really excited about. And they have brought their first occupation forward, which is a community health worker. Um, and we just started discussions about starting a teacher apprenticeship for high schoolers. Wow. So that's what we're super excited about. You know, according to data released by the National Center of Education Statistics, nearly half, so 44% of public schools right now are reporting full or part-time teacher vacancies. So it is a big mm -hmm. issue. Um, so we are very excited about this teacher apprenticeship opportunity that we hope to bring to Northern Kentucky. Another uh, great opportunity, Theme Arrow and uh, Epic Flight Academy over at CBG. They just broke ground for a new aircraft and mechanics school so we're looking to partner with registered apprenticeship for those occupations um, when they get their facility open next year we are also excited to work with Ella King over down here at Zoe Grace Salon and Med Spa um, they're actually located right up the street from us here at, at the chamber mm -hmm. but she's creating a cosmetologist occupation so that'll be the first cosmetologist occupation we have in northern Kentucky yeah it's 2023 we're bringing it um, and then we've got an aesthetic nurse apprenticeship which will also be the first of its kind in the state of Kentucky so we're really delighted that employees are noticing the benefits of uh, getting involved with apprenticeship but you know, due to COVID and staff changes, we are starting to gain some momentum with apprenticeships in Northern Kentucky. Um, I just filled my vacant role in April. So we currently have about 25 registered apprenticeships now mm -hmm. in Northern Kentucky. So my eight counties, they do include Boone, Kenton, Campbell, Carroll, uh, Grant, Gallatin, Owen, and Pendleton. Um, in comparison to Jefferson County, which is Louisville, they have similar class sizes for high school grads, but they have over 100 employers who participate in their apprenticeship program. So that's why I've been kindly <laughs> invited here today, because we need employers. Yeah, you know? so that's a great, absolutely great point. And you touched on a bunch of different types. So with the Arrow, with Zoe Grace Salon, who are both um, chamber members, I believe. How can employers get involved? What do employers need to know about apprenticeships? What are those opportunities and what are the benefits? So lots of benefits, but a typical registered apprenticeship, just to see what one looks like, it includes 2,000 hours of on-the-job training, which means a year, 144 hours of classroom instruction. The program has to be at least a year long and is required to have at least one wage progression before the apprentice graduates. I mean, an apprenticeship is an industry-driven, high-quality career pathway where employers can develop and prepare their future workforce. Um, and individuals can obtain paid work experience, classroom instruction, and then a portable nationally recognized credential provided by the Department of Labor. So a KCTCS, which here in Northern Kentucky is considered gateway, mm -hmm. you know, they'd be happy to handle your related technical instruction, um, but there are many employers who are handling their own. So either way works um, sufficiently, but setting up a registered apprenticeship is super easy. We have most work process in place, um, but here in the state of Kentucky, we are state mandated, so we don't aren't, aren't regulated by the federal guidelines. So we have the opportunities to get those different kinds of occupations registered, like a nurse assistant. Um, and we do have unconventional apprenticeships as well. That's the one, that's kind of what I like to do. So the tattoo technicians, the pilots, the cultivators, nurses, CDL drivers, you know, outside, of course, we need more HVAC technicians and, um, you know, machinist, but, you know, registering any occupation that fits the registered standard guidelines, I can help you do that. And again, according to the Department of Labor, just some insight here, employers who participate in apprenticeship are finding a 90% employment retention rate. Wow reflecting a higher productivity score while reducing turn turnover and to provide a continuous flow of skilled labor, which these are all remedies of um, their complaints our Northern Kentucky employers have that I hear it all, every day. Um, also, if you get your program registered, this will also have grant consideration and students can use their keys money. So they can use their keys wow. money towards their approach. They can buy tools, uniforms, books. Um, they can even get reimbursed for travel experience expenses. I can take care of that as well for you. Um, so yeah, if you want to help inspire careers, please reach out to me. And uh, I don't know if we had talked about our Northern Kentucky. We just received the funding for the first ever high school apprenticeship career fair. And we're busting in almost 5,000 kids, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at the Turfway Events Center. Um, between the hours of 8 and 2 o'clock 
And we are still looking for employers, and it is free to register. Yeah, and what date is that career fair? November 13th, November 14th, and the 15th. So yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That is such an excellent opportunity. Like you said, this is something um, I'm often observing the NKY at Work segment when Nancy is doing these interviews. Yeah. She talks so often about how we're working with employers to increase retention, build these talent pipelines. Apprenticeships really kind of seem like they fit the whole bill for that. They do, yeah. Yeah, and the data supporting them, their, their successful programs, we just need employers to participate. Yes, yeah. so. so for employers who want to learn more about how to get involved with apprenticeships and maybe start their own, how can they get in contact with you or with your office? So please email me, S-A-R-A-H, Sarah, dot, Crider, C-R-I, D is Dan, E-R at K-Y dot gov. That is awesome. And Sarah, before I let you go today, is there anything else you'd like to share about your office or about apprenticeships in general to our chamber members? Um, outside of us only having 25 registered apprenticeship programs, uh, requiring employers to participate and really give these kids alternative career options, you know, outside of higher ed. Mm -hmm. um, but that is what we're trying to focus, is trying to give students alternative options. Yeah, that is so great. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being a guest today. Thank you, Sarah. And I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. Hi, I'm Shannon Schumacher, Account Executive, Kentucky Market Leader. At Haran, we champion bold innovation to help employers and individuals thrive. As an industry thought leader, we explore new horizons in healthcare, benefits, employee engagement, and wellness. We work harder to deliver all the strategic benefits, planning, and execution you expect from a true partner. And we do it with laser focus on your short and long-term outcomes to help manage your benefits while improving your employee experience. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the podcast and learning a little bit more about NKYP and Kentucky's great apprenticeship offerings. Don't forget to register for Bourbon and Boards happening on Tuesday, November 7th. Like I said, you can register for that event now at nkychamber.com slash events. Thank you once again to our podcast sponsors, CVG, Crew Consulting, and Haran. Finally, if you are a Northern Kentucky Chamber of Commerce member and you want to be featured on the Northern Kentucky Spotlight podcast, please reach out to Lynn Ablin. And if you're someone who is interested in sharing your workforce strategies and resources on NKY at Work, please reach out to Nancy Spivey. You can find their contact information on the screen in front of you or at our staff directory at nkychamber.com. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys next week.